In this screencast, we'll be looking at position time graphs and uh, what we can get from them and uh, how we can describe motion using them and calculate the velocity using the slope. So uh, again, the position is where you're located against some axis. Now that's going to be on the vertical. And uh, right now our generic one-dimensional direction or dimension is the x dimension. So we're going to plot our position on the x dimension. Uh, typically we're going to plot that in meters. That's the base unit of the uh, system we're using, the MKS system. Uh, on the horizontal axis, we are going to plot time. Uh, and time, the base unit, is going to be in the seconds. If we go between two different times, that's going to be a delta T. That's a time interval. If we move between two different places on the axis, the position axis, that's going to be a change in position. That's going to be... A, uh, a displacement. And the displacements can be positive or negative. They are vector quantities. So we can go in the positive direction, which would be up the graph here. And we can also go in the negative direction, which would be down the graph over here. Uh, in all cases, the velocity of the object is defined as the rate of change of position. So it's delta x over delta t and therefore it's the slope of this graph. Steeper the slope, faster the magnitude, the higher the magnitude of the velocity. Positive slopes, looking like so, would be positive velocities in terms of direction. And downward slopes, like so, would be negative velocities, uh, indicating that we're moving in the negative direction. Okay, so let's take a look at some of this. Uh, first, a quick review of acceleration and how we determine the direction of acceleration. Again, uh, to get faster, the direction of the acceleration and the velocity must match. So here we need a match. Uh, it's moving in the positive direction, so that's positive velocity. Therefore, we need positive acceleration. Now, to get slower, we need them to be opposites. We need directions to be opposites. So we have a positive velocity. That means we must have a negative acceleration. Uh, this is the way most people are familiar or comfortable with it. They think of positive acceleration as getting faster, negative acceleration as slowing down. Uh, but that's not always true, as we'll see in the next two. Uh, this one's getting faster, so we need a match. Uh, the direction is negative, so that's a negative velocity. To match the negative velocity, I need a negative acceleration. Now notice we are getting faster, and still we have a negative acceleration. So it's not as simple as saying negative acceleration means slower or faster. You have to look at the combination. What's the impact between the velocity and the acceleration? OK, here we're getting slower in our last one. So in that case, we're going to need um, opposites. We have a negative velocity, so that means we must have a positive acceleration. So positive acceleration in that case meant slowing down. OK, so on the graphs, we're going to draw some different curves or lines to just give an example, a possible example, of the type of motion described. Um, we'll start with uh, <coughs> A is remaining at rest. So we're not changing our location. So that's going to be a straight line across. We're at the same place for all points of time. So that would be A, that would be rest. Now, if we're moving, we need anything that's not rest. So it could be an upward trend. It could be a downward trend. It could be a curving trend. Any of those would work for B. We are not staying always at the same place at the same time. This object is actually moving, this line right here is actually moving down towards zero if we assume that this is our zero spot. Okay, on the other next step we're looking at um, moving slow. Now speed, the value of the speed, the magnitude of the speed is all about the slope. So moving slow, the slope would not be very steep. Now, moving fast, the slope is going to be steep. So it might intersect and cross like that. It could be steeply downward. 
Okay, that's also fast. It just has to be at a much steeper or at a steeper angle um, than say 45 degrees if you want to call it fast, and below 45 you might want to call it slow. Um, that depends on the actual values on the position time graph. Uh, in our next one, we have moving in a positive direction and moving in a negative direction. Again, the slope is all about the direction. So in A, I need a positive slope. Now, it could be a curving positive slope, something like this, indicating even faster, but it has to be an upward trending slope. Uh, <clears throat> so that would indicate our object is moving along this path in this direction. Now, if we're moving in the negative direction, what we're going to see is some kind of downward trend. It could be that, it could be a curve, it could be a slowing down curve. But in that case, we're actually moving downward toward zero and getting closer to zero. Okay, uh, next one, moving at a constant speed. Uh, now, constant speed indicates that the slope, the magnitude of the velocity, should not be changing. Uh, we are moving, so I don't want a flat line. There's the slope of the flat line is zero, and I would be at rest. So anything where I have a little bit of slope, or even a lot of slope, as long as the line is just that. It needs to be linear for A. Uh, now for the second one, anytime we are accelerating, we're going to get a change in, uh, assuming that it's not just a direction change, we're going to uh, get a change in the value of the velocity, either faster or slower. So we're going to get a curve. It might be a speeding up type curve. It might be a slowing down type curve. Uh, but it's always going to be parabolic. It's going to be uh, a parabola or part of a parabola in any time that we're changing our speed, accelerating, speeding up or slowing down. Uh, and the next one, we are moving in the positive direction and uh, speeding up. <clears throat> now to get faster, the slopes have to get steeper. We're moving in the positive direction. So this slope is less steep than this slope. So the curve that I'm going to get is going to be something that is steepening. Now in B, we're getting slower as we move in the positive direction. Now I'm moving in the positive direction, so again, that means I'm moving this way, but I'm going to get slower, which indicates the spaces between my objects are going to get, if they're equal time intervals, the spaces between my objects are going to become less and less. That's going to show up like this. Now that means the slope started out fairly steep, but then became much more shallow so I slowed down. Okay, and this next one, we are moving in a negative direction and speeding up. Now, negative direction means I need to trend downward. I'm going to be going this way. And as I do so, I'm speeding up, so I should see an increase between the locations, the spaces of my uh, objects. So this time, I'm going to get faster in the negative direction, so I'm going to get a steepening curve, but downward. Okay, so this end is steeper than this end one. This one was actually very flat. Uh, now if I'm moving in the negative direction and slowing down, uh, as I move in that negative direction, the spaces are going to get closer together. So again, we're going to get a flattening of the graph. Didn't quite go as far down as I planned, but a flattening of the graph. Cancel that part there, and that's section B. So we're steeper to start with and flatter at the end. So we're slowing down. Okay, uh, we'll look at some other um, similar motions and plot some slopes in our next segment.